Okay, guys, I ran across um, what the what you're about to watch on some of this video um, last night. So today is um, September 24th, 2024. It is 1131 p.m. So I ran across it on the 23rd okay, of September. And um, I'm now doing the video um, because I had another one that I just uploaded today. <clears throat> But what I'm going to put on here, um, I think I'm going to try and link it in description, is the dream that I had um, about like the rapture and the Revelation 12 sign. And um, that's where I got the Capri, like because I was wearing Capri pants. Okay. Um, and then... Um, that led me into some other things. And then I think I'm going to link um, part of a video, only part of it, um, a word that I was given by the Lord um, about who you're about to watch. Okay. Um, and I know that some of y'all said that y'all couldn't hear it in the last video, but um I'm going to, I think, re-put that on this one, just that one little clip of that, that whole video. Um, and then I'll make sure that you can hear it or what was said. Okay. And then um, I'm going to add, I didn't want to make this too long, but I'm going to add the dreams and some things that have happened that I believe the Lord's leading me to, to add and say um, on that. But... Um, let's get into this, okay? Quanto urgente sia la sfida che abbiamo davanti, dobbiamo puntare sulla educazione, che apre la mente e i cuori ad una comprensione più larga, più profonda della realtà. Serve un patto educativo globale che ci educhi alla solidarietà universale Okay, who gets attacked, guys? Who's the least vulnerable? That's the next generations. I know the rapture's coming, but who out of every year's, who gets attacked the most? The children, right? It's the children. And I know that since inflations and um, everything's changed, it's like a contract with the devil. You know, more people have to work to even afford to put food on the table. So the mom can't stay home or, um, and raise the children. Um, and I, I know, I know we, with this inflation and everything from years and years and years back, families have had to do what they have to do. And, um, my children have gone to school. They've started early in education, you know, um, age four. Sometimes you start them and you put them in, have to put them in um, like daycares and nurseries, you know, when they're infants. But unfortunately, who's raising? That's all by design. Who's raising? You're not raising your kid. By the time you get home, make dinner, get everything, thrown, thrown to bed, you don't see them the next morning, you have to rush them off. I know I've been there. I was a single mom for a while um, with my first son. I've been there. And not everyone has family that can step in. Even though family is good, you know, you still need the parent. But who's raising the kids? Who has a hold of our children? Normally from, let's just say, age three to four, like pre-Ks and, and things like that. Um, all the way up to sometimes like what, 28, depending on how long your education is and things like that. But you're in a system, you're indoctrinated in a system, a man-made system. I know that children have to learn. I know you have to learn, but I've never understood why are you learning so long and why are you learning so much on things you're not going to um, master in 
why aren't you just all of a sudden when you hit high school, at least high school, why is high school not just like trades learning? Why aren't you just learning trades at a certain age? Or, um, you know, if you want to become a doctor, then it's all focused on and you go ahead and start on what you need. Not let's do school and then plus this on top of that so you can have an associate's degree when you know it just takes more time away from the family and away from God's plan and not being so tired and then and then um, sports and, and, and the life of everything else going on that you can barely make it to church or barely read the Bible as a family or pray or It's indoctrination and it's by design, indoctrination by design. And you see what he just said about education and that we, it opens the minds to what his reality is, not God's word and law and what he made. It's, his reality is. Okay. So open the minds so they, they can't fight against. Open the minds so they can't see it blurs to gray instead of being black and white. Open the minds so they accept everything you tell them or accept everything. There's all different paths. There's all different ways. <clears throat> be you. God says you're made in the image of God. You're made in the image of God. And the world's been destroying it. And they hit mostly in education. When they're raised by the people they see the most. I know mama, I know daddy, I know, I know we need to teach them while they're young. And the Bible says, and they will not depart from it. Teach them about God strong at home and they will not depart from it. Right. If they're saved early and they know about the Lord, um, even if they go off a little bit, God's faithful and true. And he brings back the, you know, the prodigal he brings back. And he'll protect and and you put an, an armor of protection over your children. You suit up with the whole armor of God every morning. It's a warfare for souls and a war, warfare for everyone. But see, the devil knows that. You bring up a child in the way it should go and he will not depart from it. If they're not being brought up in the word of God... They're being brought up in the word of the world who was led by Satan and they will not depart from it. They know this. December 3rd, 2023, again highlights that when giving a message to the world, Salvation of your eternal soul isn't what's on Pope Francis's mind, but instead we need to focus on the salvation of the climate. Pope urges world religions to unite against environmental devastation. Pope Francis. Okay, the Bible says you do not worship the creation. You worship the creator. Going against God's word anti-God spreading the truth about Jesus Christ raises the question that if Malachi Martin and the other high officials within the Vatican were correct that an enthronement of Satan took place in St. Paul's Chapel inside Vatican City on June 29th 1963 something happened in the Vatican where you have Freemasons occultists whatever you want to call these people, they're definitely under the influence of Satan, enthroning Satan. That reference in Malachi Martin's books, Windswept House, there's um, 
you know, without getting into too much of the details and, and, and stuff that would be sensationalized, there has been more than one source that has come out and confirmed what is contained in that book. Even the bishop in South Carolina where the ritual took place, because it was done by a form of projection, even where the ritual took place, the bishop there did research, found out it was true, and then reconsecrated the church. Malachi Martin, who died in 1996, says that at the height of the Second Vatican Council in Rome, there was a ceremony to enthrone Lucifer in the Vatican at the chair of Peter. The church in question, St. Paul's Chapel within the Vatican walls, hosted a very different rite of mass on January 29, 1963, just one week after the election of Pope Paul VI. The ceremony Malachi Martin is on record as saying was a black mass, or the traditional Latin mass said in reverse, complete with an animal sacrifice and a potential person who was a victim used in ceremonial rituals. The ceremony was not of the Novus Ordo Mass, because in Malachi Martin's words, even the Satanists know that this mass is not valid. Martin writes that the black mass was attended by high-ranking prelates in the church, important laymen, business leaders, and politicians. At least one cardinal was in attendance. A concurrent enthronement of Satan black mass was also held in South Carolina on that date. The piece of the puzzle... Okay, so here is a clip or not a clip, but I found the, um, the recording on my phone. I had to go through it of, um, that's on a longer video. Okay. With more information and dreams and everything. So if you want to see the whole thing, go find that one. Um, it was given to me on 9, 14, 2024 at 6 32 AM. Okay. And this is what was given. Okay. I woke up from a really weird dream. Um, like, like a little bit ago. Maybe I could have started a minute ago, but I just put my phone to do it. And I don't know what it was, but I think it was a lot about, like, the Pope and the beast that rises out of the ocean. I don't remember a lot about it. It was long. I don't remember a lot about it. I do remember that I woke up and I was like, ah, or something. And then I, I felt like the, the beast rising and like it was like at my feet. I don't know. It was weird. Oh, I felt like it was at my feet, like something. The beast rising. And it was just weird. Like everyone had to be warned. Like, like I saw it everywhere. Like it was surrounding me or something. It was just weird. Um, oh my goodness! I think I had times and everything too in the stream, but I don't know. Like they, I don't know. Um, six thirty-two strong and six thirty-four strong. Okay, so then I got 632 Strongs and 634 Strongs. Um, I'm not going to re-Google those, but you can Google them. Just put those numbers in and just put Strongs um, after it, and then it'll bring it up for you. But what I got was I saw the, um, it was a long dream. I had like times in it and dates, and I just can't remember any of it. But I remember the Pope. I remember... Um, the beast rising out of the ocean. Um, I remember saying everyone has to be warned. Everyone has to be warned and just thinking, oh man, everyone has to be warned. And, um, as I was waking up, I was like, <gasps> as I was waking up, I felt like it was at my feet like the evil, the, the beast rising out, the, that whole like contract. Okay. Was at my feet in my bed. It came around me. Okay. And then I looked and I have a bathroom door on the side that I'd lay on. Okay. And, um, 
I didn't put this out, so I'm putting it now on that one, okay? Because I felt like it was what was going on with that contract of those things, okay? Um, I felt like it was surrounding me. Evil was all around it all around. Okay. And it was surrounding me like engulfing and closing in. Okay. And when I woke up, I still had that feeling. That's how I felt it at my feet, my legs. It was all around me. And then I looked at my door because it was open. I normally have it closed just cause I don't, you know, I normally have that closed. Um, but it was open and I saw, I saw a black hand, like shadow, but it was black. It had, it had feature to it. It wasn't like see-through. Okay. And it was long fingers. Okay. And it was at the top, like holding the top of my door like that. And it was holding the top of it, not like reaching up and trying to reach. Okay. So it was like, like it was holding, like it was going to grab it and close it or open it. Okay. Not holding the top of the door, but holding it. And it was at the top of the door. So how tall is your door? Like seven feet or something like that. Right. I guess. I don't know. I'm guessing here. Right. And it was at the top you know, and it wasn't reaching like it had to reach. It was like, if I grabbed something, I would grab something here at my chest level or something or my waist, you know, right around here level. And I would pull and move. So I knew that whatever was doing that was taller than the door. It was like eight or nine feet tall and had slender, that's where I'm going to put it. If you have any clue what I'm saying, it's demonic. It's say, demonic. Okay. It had slender fingers and it was black. Okay. Um, it's what a lot of people are making contracts with. It's one of them. Okay. And it was weird that I was given that from God, what you just heard about the Pope and the beast rising out. And then I see that. And um, it's not the first time I've seen it. Like I've, I've been able to see things since I've been little like really little, you know, some of you may know that, you know, that's what I'm saying. Your children put the whole armor of God on. I went to Christian school. I was raised young. I went to Sunday church, but be careful what you bring in and you do and, and pray over your home and your kids. Like and my, my dad used to go around and pray over the doors and lock the doors and this and that. But there was, there was things going on that let, toe holds in and things in, you know, like just it's strife, you know, fighting anything can let anything in a movie you watch, you know, you're letting things in. And so I would get attacked all the time and have issues because they want to take down your kids. They want to take down, they want to take you down before you realize who you are in God. Right. And, um, so I've seen that before, um, along with many others. Um, it's real. If you don't want to believe it's real, what do you think the Bible tells you that you fight against not flesh and blood, but, you know, principalities and, and things, things like that. You're fighting. It's, it's a battle of good and evil. If you believe in angels, you believe in the fallen angels, right? Demons. You got to believe everything in the Bible. God's word's truth. You may not want to see it and fight it, but you armor up with a full armor. Greater is he that's in you 
than he that's in the world. There's no fear. Um, but I needed to put that on because of what I was given before I saw it. And then people are blind to what's going on with what you're looking at right now in this video. Don't be blind. Don't be blind. Don't be led. Don't be led like a cattle to the slaughter. Don't. Okay. So I'm also going to put on um, a dream that my, my um, son had. A, I'm going to link a dream that my daughter had because it's long. Um, and then um, I know there's something else he wants me to talk about. Um, and some other things that's dealing with this. Okay. And that quote reads, through some crack, the smoke of Satan has entered into the church of God. Archbishop Carlo Maria Vagano was excommunicated from the Catholic Church in July of 2024, and he had some very strong words to share in relation to Pope Francis that might shed some light on this as well. Vatican excommunicates ex-ambassador to U.S. Archbishop Carlo Maria Vagano, declares him guilty of schism. As Francis was wrapping up a tense visit to Ireland, Vigano claimed in an 11-page letter that in 2013, he told the pontiff of the allegations of sex abuse against formal Cardinal Theodore McCarrick, the most senior U.S. churchman. But he wrote, the pontiff ignored that and allowed McCarrick to continue to serve the church for another five years publicly. He said that the Pope should resign and subsequently branded him a false prophet and a servant of Satan. While Pope Francis was visiting Singapore for his uniting of the religions, telling them all past lead to God, the reaction of some of the people there when seeing him was very similar to what the Bible tells us will be like when people marvel after the false prophet and the Antichrist. It was an experience many say will remain in their hearts for a long time. I feel so blessed. Sister, what do you feel? Very blessed because it's a historic, uh, uh, Pope's uh, historic visit to Singapore. I'm so excited to come here, but I never thought like we can uh, see him like this uh, distance. I feel like I'm so blessed right now. And uh, Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh no. How did we miss this? Or did we miss this? Or am I just late to the party? Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. So. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. I've had dreams about King Charles. My sons had dreams about King Charles. That's all I'm saying about that. Okay. Okay. Now let's go to the red heifers. The red heifers. And that they're going to burn them and they have to use the ashes to purify. Right? Okay. So what's a heifer? It's a beast, right? Okay. Yes. Then. Okay. So we got the mark of the beast. Oh my goodness. Okay, we got the mark of the beast. They're using ashes to purify. Right now, what does the Pope put on the forehead of people when they come on Ash Wednesday? It's called Ash Wednesday, right? Anyway, they walk around. They walk around with a mark. People walk around with a mark on their forehead. Now, get hear me. They're not getting the mark yet. It's not the mark of... The beast that can't, that God can't love you right now, right? Okay, but it will be. It will be like a, 
Okay, I know that it's an injection or it's something. You're going to have to take something and do something, okay? But listen. Oh, my goodness. The Pope calls himself God in place of God because he says that he's God on earth and he can get rid of sin. Right? That you come to him, you give him your prayers, you confess to him, and he gets rid of sin. And he alone, you go through him to get to heaven. Right? Which is wrong. You go through Jesus. Right? And he alone. God forgives sins and God covers your sins. Jesus. Right? By the blood of Jesus. Okay. The, the priest in the temple with the heifer is saying that that heifer can for, that the heifer is going to cover your sins, the ashes and the blood of that heifer sprinkle with the blood of the ashes. Right. So they're calling the heifer, that priest and the Pope God. Right. I've talked about this in my videos. Okay. Oh my gosh. The Pope is calling for, <clears throat> One world love, one world unity, one world religion. We know that's going to happen because we're going to have a one world government and one world everything through the Antichrist. Okay? The mark of the beast. The Pope now uses ashes, Ash Wednesday. Everyone's going to have to kneel and bow because that's what happens. Don't you go up there and you kneel and bow. You eat the bread for their communion that has the sun on it, which is sun worship. And you drink the blood, which is wine. It's like a, you're making a covenant with that drinking, right? Because it's supposed to be the covenant of Jesus. And then marking your head, which are they going to use the heifer ashes to mark the covering on everyone's head? Like the mark of the beast, like or the heifer ashes that you're going to bend your knee to um, Catholicism. You're going to bend your knee to um, Rome. You're going to bend your knee to the Roman Empire Catholic ways. <clears throat> My daughter also had a dream and it was about people going into a room and getting a mark. But when she walked into it, like they were forcing everyone to go in there, she said it was like an altar and you bent down at it like you do at a Catholic altar, like you go up and you bent down, right? And there was a, like a priest in there and he was like, oh, you know, and they were giving people the mark and she was like, how do I hide not taking it? How do I not take this or something? I can't remember the dream. I'll get, I, either she put it on and so I'll link it or I'll get her to restate it. <clears throat> and she said it was also a communion. Like you had to take the bread and take the wine. Like a covenant. Like accepting the covenant or something. Because when you take communion for Jesus dying on the cross for you and rising again. It's the bread and the, the wine, right? And that's in remembrance of what he did. And that's his covenant to you, that you are sealed with his Holy Spirit. That's a remembrance that he has you. That you're his when you come to Jesus and you've accepted, then that's a remembrance that you're his and what he's done for you. You do it in remembrance until he comes back or you go to heaven to be with him. Oh my goodness. The heifer ashes on everyone's forehead. Are they going to have something in the heifer ashes? Or it's going to be the mark. It says the mark on the forehead or on the right hand. So a mark of the heifer ashes on the forehead and then the right hand's going to injection or something. I 
I don't know. I'm just working through this. Okay. So, I had two dreams in the past couple months. Uh, the first one was I was outside on our like front porch area and it was like morning time but a little bit in the afternoon like I don't know it's maybe like nine ten o'clock probably and uh, I was looking at the side of our house and then out of the woods uh, it was Slenderman Slenderman was walking uh, sorry sorry uh, Slenderman was walking and it's that it's that tall lanky skinny guy that wears like a black suit and doesn't have a face it's just a white head and he was really tall and uh he was like coming at me and I was like whoa and he was scary and I ran inside and I locked the front door and I looked out the window and he like shook his head at me like this and then he started walking around to the back and walked to the back door and I ran downstairs I was like no 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 and I got to the back door and I saw him coming around the corner and I was like oh no and I was trying to lock the back door and it wouldn't lock and then he got to the door and I woke up and then the second dream was um uh I was sleeping on our couch and I like woke up in my dream. I was still dreaming, but I woke up in my dream in the same position that I went to bed in. And I like looked at my mom's bedroom door behind me. And I saw like a black figure really quick, just like walk past the door on the inside. And her door started shutting slowly. Not like really slow, but it was like, like kind of like, I don't know. It was a little fast, but he didn't, like, slam the door. And I, like, got up really fast, and I was trying to get to her room because I think I was going to rebuke it and tell it to leave, and I was trying to save mom and my yeah, my mom. And, uh, and then I woke up from that one. But, yeah. Scary. Scary, scary. But, uh. God bless you guys. Uh, see you in the cloud soon. Jesus loves you. Bye. I know, guys, that there's some scary images on this, and you may not want to hear what's being said. Um, but we know that there's good and evil. We know that there's fallen from the grace of God. We know that... Um, the devil was cast out, Lucifer, from the presence of God. Okay, for rising against God. We know how it happens at the end and that he's been rising up ever since against God and that there's going to be the great Armageddon war at the end, but we know that God wins. Okay, that's why we say Jesus is coming. Do not be left here during the seven year tribulation. Do not be left here. The veil between people, the veil between everything is thinning and people that have never seen things are seeing things. It's because it's always been here and there's shaking that has to happen to bring some people to God because he does not want to lose their soul for eternity. That's the whole point. It's a soul battle and the devil wants to take down as many as he can to hell with him before he goes. Okay, your soul and your body has an eternity. Make a choice for Jesus. Make a choice for Jesus that your soul and your body can go to eternity in heaven. It's not a game. This isn't a joke. It's not cool Halloween little captions to, to make you like the video. It's nothing. We, we are light. We're not supposed to walk with darkness. And they're after you, and you may not think it, but they're after your children. You see it. You see it. Well, 
why is it that you're still seeing things in your home if you're praying and all armored up? <clears throat> Greater is he that lives in me than he is that's in the world. Okay. And I will tell you, when you do something, it lets contracts and open doors in so that your family can get hit. Okay, and it doesn't mean that I'm letting them in. It can be anyone in the house that may do something they're not supposed to do or watch what they're not supposed to, bring it in, the music they listen to, um, um, I mean, anything, lying, you know, anything, argument, strife, cheating, um, anything that the devil wants to use to destroy your family or you. Right. So people around you can do something that um, they're not repenting for and asking forgiveness and um, trying to to walk a Holy Spirit led walk. And um, a lot of houses just like mine are maybe divided with two different masters. OK. But the Lord still is in control. God's in control and he's on the throne. And nothing shall harm me. Nothing shall harm me. Yeah, you may have to battle and you battle more when things are, you know, getting rights to, to come in and, and sniff around or play. Right. But. The battle's just getting harder at the last days because it is the last days. This is the end. I started this because God told me this whole channel and telling everyone because God told me two, two and a half years ago to sound the alarm, to tell everyone to put on the full armor of God. That means that if you're a Christian, armor up. Ephesians 6, right? Armor up. And if you're not a Christian, then come to Jesus and armor up. Put on the full armor of God. This is a battle. You don't understand. He said, this is a battle. We are at war. You cannot just have another lazy day Sunday. That's what was said to me by God in my face, verbally in my face, awake, sitting on the edge of my bed. It is a battle for souls. It is a battle. And it doesn't mean that you go and you don't show the love of the Lord and you hurt someone. You get on your knees and you battle. You, you fight justly and you let God fight for you. But you open your Bible, you read, you pray, you get your household in order because he's coming. And you battle on your knees, you battle on warfare in your home as you walk, your property, your neighborhood. You battle in prayer with the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the warring angels. You let God handle that battle. Believe me, they're scared of you because you have God in you. If you've got God in you, they're scared of you. They like to be scary. They like to be scary, but... They want you to think that they have the upper hand. They don't. I'm telling you that many a people, and we're seeing them fall right now, but many a people had made contracts. And those people can still come to the Lord Jesus because the world's not over yet. They haven't taken the final mark, deciding that they choose the Antichrist instead of Instead of God, they haven't taken a, a mark to seal them. So come to Jesus and get sealed with the Holy Spirit. Anyone can come. He's calling and wanting to save everyone. And all this falling and shaking is revealing. Like anything in the dark will be revealed, the Lord says. 
and all this shaking is revealing everything and everyone and things going on. But sometimes that shaking is because he's still bringing those people back. Maybe when they were younger, they believed they just hadn't given their life. They didn't make the choice yet to come to Jesus. A lot of times the shaking, these people will shake just like, you know, I mean, people sometimes have to get to their, their lowest point. The bottom, what's he say? He pulls them up the Murray clay. That's hell. Hell has Murray clay. He pulls them up from their soul going to hell for eternity. Jesus saves them. He rescued me from the Murray clay. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. I know that's a different, that's a different psalm and everything, but this isn't a joke. This isn't a game. Don't go against your creator, God, and his son he sent to die for you and shed his blood on that cross. He's coming back and he still loves you and he has great mercy and he's calling. Answer him and leave the darkness behind. <sighs>